Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about vectors that are circumscribed by a unit circle. In this case, we have the vector a, and you can see that since it's inscribed by or it's within the unit vector, the magnitude of the vector must equal the radius of the unit circle here. Therefore, the magnitude of the vector a must be equal to 1. Notice that when we project the vector a onto the x-axis, this distance right here is equal to the magnitude of the x-component, and when we project the vector onto the y-axis, this distance there is the magnitude of the y-component. I did say magnitude because I didn't have a little arrow on top of it, so they're not the vectors, although we can draw a small little vector here and call that the a sub x vector. For example, right here, this would be the a sub x, meaning the x-component of the vector a, I can draw a little vector right here, call that a sub y, put a little arrow on top of it, and that would be the y component of the vector a. Now, if I try to figure out how long those x and y components are of my unit vector a, you can see that a sub x can be found by taking the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle theta right here. That gives us the cosine of theta. The same for the y component. The magnitude of the y component of the vector a is the magnitude of a times the sine of theta, or simply sine of theta. So the x component can be represented like this, or if you like this better, you can say that's equal to the cosine of theta in the x direction, or multiplied times the i unit vector. And here that would be the sine of theta multiplied by the j unit vector. Of course, as you now know, you can also represent the x and y components like this as well. And again, calculating the magnitude of vector a, that would be written as a, which is equal to the square root of the sum of the, su of the square of, let me say that again, <laughs> that the magnitude of a is equal to the square root of the sum of the components of the vector squared. And so since the x component is the cosine of theta and the y component is the sine of theta, you square those two. The cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. The square root of 1 is equal to 1. So therefore, again, a can be considered a unit vector since its magnitude is equal to 1. Now, of course, we want that to be unitless, so we're not talking about newtons or meters per second squared or anything like that. We simply say the magnitude of a is equal to 1, no units involved, and therefore we can call it a unit vector. And that's what we mean by a unit vector inscribed by the unit circle.